it's my goal um, to uh, create that billion dollar company. I, uh, we we want to create, uh, we're on track to create a hundred million dollar company and then we'll be creating a billion dollar company. This is the Entrepreneur Way with Neil Ball. Unlocking the secrets of successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball. Napoleon Hill said the power of the mastermind is the driving force. To discover how you can unlock the potential in your business using the power of a mastermind, go to mastermindunlimited.com. And now, here is your host, Neil Ball. Hello, it's Neil Ball here. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Entrepreneur Way. The Entrepreneur Way is about the entrepreneur's journey, the vision, the mindset, the commitment, the sacrifice, failures and successes. I am so excited to bring you our special guest today, Benjamin Bressington. But before I do, I have a quote for you. Vanessa Redgrave said, ask the questions if you're to find the right answers. The Entrepreneur Way asks the questions so we all get the insights, inspiration and ideas to apply in our businesses. Benjamin, welcome to the show. Are you ready to share your version of the Entrepreneur Way with us? I am ready to share my uh, awesome with uh, the entrepreneur's way. I'm very excited. Benjamin Bressington is the founder of Cuppa.io. He is a leading gamification and customer engagement expert. Benjamin's goal is to help 100,000 people make their first $100 online or offline within the first 72 hours of using Cuppa.io. Benjamin helps people package and share their awesome with the world. Benjamin, can you provide us with some more insights into your business and personal life to allow us to get to know more about what you do and who you are? Yeah, so of, of course. So uh, I'm, as you can tell, I'm, I'm Australian. I do have a little bit of a, uh, an accent from down under. Um, I've, uh, I grew up and, uh, just off the Great Barrier Reef in uh, Queensland, Australia. And I was uh, passionate about entrepreneurship my, my entire life, from watching my family and the people around me. I actually ended up with a law degree and a psychology degree. I was fascinated with criminology. So I have a bit of a cr- criminology flair in my degree. But uh, I was fascinated with human behavior. And one of the things I was actually presented with as a, uh, as a young fellow was that uh, the opportunity to travel over to Hong Kong. And I was actually 16 the first time I traveled over to Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Traveled over there by myself and actually went to a massive trade show and expo where – when you're 16 and you walk into this like football-sized stadium, and it's, it's like it just looks like a massive convention center that you could uh, imagine, but it was five stories high, and there was booth after booth, and some of the booths were literally three foot wide, um, and there was thousands of them. So I was uh, traveling to places like that to find products, to list them online, and then sell them online. Um, way back in early uh, 2004 mm-hmm. and uh, it was a very interesting time for me because I got to learn a lot about product sourcing, selling products online and offline, brokering deals um, and uh, I really got a love and a passion for doing business and doing business internationally. Um, myself, I- I'm married, i got a beautiful wife, uh, we live in Tampa, Florida, and I'm uh, very passionate about cycling. I love to cycle. So uh, if it's not a 30-mile ride uh, or longer, uh, I'm not enjoying it as much as I'd like to be. So I, I love those long rides. I typically do a 60-mile ride uh, or more, mm-hmm. um, and uh, my perfect morning is waking up, going for a ride, having a coffee, and riding home from somewhere. So uh, that's my perfect morning. Sounds fantastic. I used to do that. And how do you make money from what you do, Benjamin? So uh, how we make money is mm-hmm. uh, we have a platform which allows people to actually sell their products online in the time it takes to make a cup of tea. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to make it super simple for people to be able to create and sell products online. So what we do is Cuppa.io is a transactional-based platform, and we end up taking a percentage of the sale from users, helping them actually get their products listed online so they no longer have to worry about the technical drama. Um, or dealing with technology. So what we do is uh, we get uh, we have training courses teaching people how to create products, how to make money online, um, and how to get their products online and selling. 
Uh, and then one of the other things we also do is we have what we call our awesome finder opportunity. This is where I actually teach people and I help people set up an actual business where they get to sell and teach others how to package their awesome. So dealing with other podcasters, other authors. For example, one of the programs we offer, offer is turn your book into a product in 21 days or less because there's a lot of authors out there who don't have a product. They have a book they're trying to sell for $20 or something like that, but they don't realize that people would be happy to pay them $197 for the same content that's in the book because they want to be able to apply it and implement it into their life. So one of our programs is we teach people and we actually do it for them. We turn their book into a product they can sell. We get it up on the cover and literally can have it selling in 21 days or less. Mm -hmm. So um, there's some of the services we offer. We help people package and share their awesome. And we've turned that into a business opportunity, which is now live in 23 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. And what, so you, you say you mentioned authors and podcasters. What, what other types of people do you deal with? So we typically deal with anyone who is looking to, uh, or who is a coach, consultant, author, trainer, um, or someone in the digital marketing space. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of people who are moving over to our platform who have used other technologies um, or are stuck in what they, we call WordPress plugin prison because they just believe they just need one more plugin, one more thing to get their website selling or to get their site working. Um, yet. You go to their site, you can't process an order. If you opt into their email list, you may not get any emails. Um, and they just haven't got their systems working and fully connected. Um, so they're the type of person we actually work with, that entrepreneur, that person who's trying to make somewhere between $1,000 to $25,000 a month from their business online. Um, and we help them get to those levels. Mm -hmm. And what do you enjoy most about what you do? What I enjoy most is actually helping people share their awesome, seeing that they can, uh, they have more potential than what they're doing right now and showing them how simple it is. It's, it's uh, when we run our one-day workshops where we teach people how to actually have, create their product and have it live within a few hours, it's phenomenal to see their face when they've built their sales page and they've got their product live and they know exactly how they're going to be getting people to get orders if they haven't got the orders already. Um, and letting them, when you see their face and they see their expression where they actually, they know it's possible and they can actually see finally how to get there, that's what I enjoy most. Uh, hearing these people say to me, man, I've, I've had more people opt into my email list in the last few hours applying these strategies than I've had like in the last year. For example, I just had a guy I was talking to in London yesterday. Because of the positioning strategy I uh, gave him on how he should use his book and his positioning, mm -hmm. he, his client actually tripled the rate in which they were going to pay him. So they were talking about paying him at one level. He sent them his book and applied some of the positioning strategies we teach and the client tripled the rate they wanted to actually pay him. That wow. doesn't happen often. Mm. Sounds great. Um, what is it that, that drives you, Benjamin? What drives me? Hmm. One of the main things that uh, drives me is just making a dent in this universe because I really want to actually help 100,000 people every year make their first $100 online or offline. Um, and I want, to make them, I want them to know that it's possible. I don't want them to have to struggle and deal with all the drama and the uh, hassles that I had to deal with um, trying to get to the position I'm in today. So it's my goal. Um, to uh, create that billion dollar company. I, uh, we we want to create, uh, we're on track to create a hundred million dollar company and then we'll be creating a billion dollar company mm -hmm. and evolving from there and having a company that's actually empowering people by the thousand around the world is really what I'm setting out to do. I really want to make a difference in the way how we transact and um, we've positioned Copper to be the future of commerce. That's what drives me. Mm -hmm. Showing people how simple it is to process a transaction and make a sale um, because that's not what a lot of people are taught in school and I feel that's unfortunate. Mm. And when you're not doing what you're doing and you obviously talked before about cycling as one of the things that you do but what else do you do to relax when you're not in your business? So uh, at the moment I'm uh, in the business quite aggressively because we're in that growth stage and mm. we're expanding in 23 countries. So there's always something going on pretty much 24 hours a day right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I do like to do is cycling. I spend a lot of time with my wife. 
Um, and we like to, uh, we always like good Thai food. So we're always going out to a different Thai restaurant or different restaurants and just enjoying life. Um, a lot of exercising uh, is always good. I find that uh, just refreshing and uh, allows you to energize the mind. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's quite simple. I just spend quality time with my wife. Uh, we get to travel, go to the movies, um, and just allow to experience life. That's really what we love doing. That's how I get to relax. But yeah, my true downtime is cycling. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love to do. Yeah. Um, do you have any entrepreneurial role models? Entrepreneurial role models? I'm mm. always modeling mm -hmm. other great people and other great businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and they're always varying at the time. So uh, if I had a role mo model at the moment, I don't know who I'd actually call out because it's just they're always changing. I model different aspects of what I want in, in my life as a whole picture. Um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. I've, I've had people say that before. All right, Benjamin, what I'd like to do is, can we talk about the time before you were an entrepreneur? What difficulties did you have to overcome when you started your business? One of the biggest difficulties you have to overcome is your own self-worth and confidence. I actually started as a very, very shy guy. When mm -hmm. I met my wife, I actually could barely say hello to her. I was that shy. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, and it's something that you struggle with every day or I struggle with every day, it's a belief in yourself. It's confidence. It's uh, I'm naturally an introvert. Um, so talking in front of a thousand people can be just like it was at one point in my life scared the crap out of me. Mm. Um, and now it's, it's just part of the process. Um, but the biggest thing is confidence and uh, believing that you're worth it. Um, like actually, I can remember at a point in time in my life, I used to charge people $500 to do what I charge them now $50,000 to do. So there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing that you're worth what you ask for uh, and really being able to believe in that. I think that's one of the biggest challenges most people ask, uh, struggle with, uh, pricing themselves. Um, and uh, yeah, I wish I, uh, if I had to go back and tell myself a few things, it'd be just believe in myself a little bit more. That mm -hmm. would uh, certainly make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And did you have any doubts that delayed you starting your business? I mean, you've talked about, obviously, your confidence and things. Was there anything else? Oh, there's always delays. Uh, not just get going and getting stuff done. So actually focusing on uh, execution. What can you do today? At, like I've gone through the, the businesses where you think I've got to go get an investor, you've got to go do this, you've got to go have all that in order. And the reality is, is you don't need any of that stuff. And a lot of the times that stuff actually prevents you from getting into business mm -hmm. because traction is the most important thing. Uh, making a sale today and onboarding that customer is actually more important than trying to pitch this investor because they're going to ask you, well, what's your traction like? What are your sales like? And you're going to be like, well, I haven't sold anything yet. So I always recommend to people go and sell it today and perfect it tomorrow um, because that when you've got sales and when you've got that momentum, that's freedom. Hmm. And what mistakes did you make that slowed your journey? Some of the mistakes I made was uh, not validating and verifying what I had people doing. Uh, and I used to deal with uh, different gurus in the industry and trusting them on their word that they knew best. Um, and, uh, and as a result, sometimes they'd failed to deliver. Um, and that uh, caused challenges for me uh, in my business because I was expecting them to deliver on what they said they'd deliver and they wouldn't. They mm -hmm. had a different objective. So uh, verifying and validating that things are happening and setting up uh, – Clear mile markers for progress is always very important. So it's always good to have and go for those big um, home run hits. But the reality is, is uh, if you're just hitting base hits every day, that adds up and that's uh, traction. Um, so some of the mistakes I made was uh, not validating. Uh, I could always say not building my list early enough um, and not having enough social capital, like really helping people out and doing some social capital to move things along. That's certainly something that uh, I wish I did. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you did before you started your business that would be helpful tips to some of the listeners who haven't yet taken the first step on the entrepreneur way? I would say just do it. Mm -hmm. Just um, your product's not going to be perfect. Here's what I'm going to. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Your business is going to going to go through phases, and uh, put out a product today. Like, do not wait. Like. The, the, 
the the perfect and most sexiest product I've ever seen is the one that puts money in your bank account. As long as you can sleep at night, it's still ethical and moral. It's okay. Uh, and people are quite happy to work with you and know that this is version one and there's better to come and there's more to come. Um, I would say take action and create a version one of your product that you can actually get momentum, get traction, build a list with, uh, work on putting your book or your product together or a consulting package or whatever it is. But make sure you take action today. And the other part of that is whatever the action you think you need to take, 10 exit. You need to take 10 times more action than you need to or than you think you need to do because most people have the challenge of not taking enough action. Nobody knows them enough Um, and don't be afraid to close. You are worth what you're asking for and ask for the money and you've got to ask for it several times Um, and once you get comfortable with that, your life can totally change because your business is not about your product. It's about your sales process and the system you set up to facilitate sales. Um, You may think it's all about your product, but at the end of the day, your customers aren't going to care. They're buying an end result, and as long as they get that end result, they're happy. Um, They don't care necessarily if it's red, blue, or pink. They just want it to do what they want it to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Some great advice there. Uh, Can we just talk about your entrepreneurial journey a little bit? Do you think, from from your perspective, do you think culture is important from the beginning in a business? Uh, culture is very important, mm-hmm. um, and it creates it helps people create the mindset of where to go. So, and you instill it by what you say and what you do. So, uh, in uh, Kappa, for example, we're instilling the culture of hustling, hustling, and ex- uh, expecting nothing less than twenty five to one hundred thousand dollars a month in sales. Because if I instill that culture, that's the standard I set for my people. That's the standard I set for my team. Uh, for example, right now on March 1st, we're actually going through a, a, a big recruitment drive where effectively we're going to onboard 1,000 plus awesome finders. And you can actually see how I'm positioning those people by what the activities we're doing. I call them in their job title, awesome finders. Mm-hmm. It's their job to go out and find and Help people package and share their awesome with the world, from authors to speakers. And it's I, it's our mission to recruit 1,000 of them around the world. Mm-hmm. And it's my goal to help these 1,000 people make their first $1,000 to $10,000 a month and hopefully have it recurring for them within the first 100 days. That's why we call it 100 Awesome Days. That's all about culture. That's all, all about um, the uh, methodology, the mindset I'm instilling in my customers and in my team every single day that we're okay hustling. We're okay saying, you know what? We're not happy with our current position right now and we want to do something about it. Um, it's why the a lot of the T-shirts you'll see people wearing for Kappa, they've got interesting sayings on them. Like the one I'm wearing right now it says, mm-hmm. failure is not an option. Or there's ones that say, crazy rich on paper. There's ones that say, I share awesome, because it helps people position themselves and remind themselves of what they're standing for. So Mm -hmm. culture is very important. So if you're working alone or if you're working with the teams, it doesn't matter. I work with teams virtually all around the world, but it's still the culture I have to put into my words, into um, into my sayings, on the bottom of my emails, on my website. It's how people share my message, and that's the culture they've instilled. And they're either going to want to be a part of that or not. So using culture is a wonderful way to enroll and attract the right people into your life. Mm-hmm. Knowing what you know now, is there anything that if you'd known it when you started out would have helped you to shortcut the learning curve? Trust myself. Mm-hmm. You know what to do. Go and do it. And how much does gut feeling influence your decisions in your business? Um, Gut feelings can be dangerous. So, yes, I believe in uh, trusting your gut or your instinct. But sometimes you've got to also be aware, is is it fear that's leading that instinct? Uh, Is it something you need some more information on and be validating? And the reality is, is, yes, money loves speed and there's things you can do quickly. But you also have to be aware that, okay, things may, no, may not go to plan and the opportunity may not look like what you think it's going to look like. 
So no matter what you're doing, you've always got to be looking for the options and how you can leverage this and turn it into an opportunity. I've gone into sessions and meetings and we worked out with bigger or different deals based on the people I was able to connect with. So one of the things you'll soon find out is people is your best resource. If you've got the right people, you can do amazing things. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that's one of the, the, the great things I think people really need to be aware of. Mm. Um, and yeah, gut instinct is one thing, but is it because you're scared? Is it because you're uncomfortable? Um, and as a result, that it helps you jump back in your shell. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things you always want to be doing is pushing yourself and going, you know, well, like here's my objective. I want to talk to 10 people today. I want to talk to 100 people today and move forward from there. Mm-hmm. Um, so what would be your best advice to other business owners that might be struggling at this moment in time? Who are you calling as a mentor? Who are you having to give you that outside perspective? One of the best things I do with people is masterminding. We mastermind strategies for monetization. It's our goal to help clients 10x their business in 12 months. Mm -hmm. That's why we have a mastermind program. So just be aware of who you're really masterminding with and are they doing it themselves or are they just preaching from a a chair and then it's all smoke and mirrors? So uh, when you do mastermind, be careful who you mastermind with. Mm-hmm. Um, because you want to make sure they're mirroring the same success you have okay, or the success you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Benjamin, life is made of constant change, whether we like it or not. In fact, some people say the only constant is change. How do you try to keep up with change? Being fluid. Uh, mm-hmm. My concepts are always changing. They're always evolving. They're, they're evolving to sit the market. Uh, or suit the new needs of my customer. I know who my customers are. Mm-hmm. They're usually always the same. However, uh, their needs may evolve and change, and my products and services need to evolve with that uh, from a technology perspective, from a way how we capture, deliver, and evolve content. So you've got to be willing to be fluid. Um, and I'm not saying jumping on every latest social media craze or all this type of stuff. Just be the biggest thing you can do is know how to capture content, record video, record audio, put together books, put together programs, things like that. If you can capture that information and you know how to capture it, Mm -hmm. it can be syndicated and published anywhere in the world. But if you don't capture that, you've got nothing. Mm. Um, Does that answer that question? Yeah, that's great. Um, What is your favorite book on entrepreneurialism, business, personal development, leadership, or motivation? And can can you tell us why you have chosen it? Yeah, my uh, favorite book. Let me uh, just—I've got Audible on my uh, on my phone, so I listen to usually a book a week uh, or more. Sometimes I listen to two or three books in a week. But I would say one of the the best books I've listened to, and I think I've listened to this book maybe 30 times this year already, and it's only January, February, uh, January 2. It's called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Um, And it's more of a motivation mindset book uh, because have you ever been in that situation where you've you've responded to things emotionally or you take them personally? Like I know when I was in business and even today, like sometimes you just take things personally. Mm. When you know what, it's got nothing to do with you being personal. If you're in the sales game, it's just the opportunity, how it was presented, the other things in that person's life. And this book, I find from a great perspective because it helps you helps you look at things from the mindset of not taking it personally, being more stoic in your thinking, in your process. Um, and if you can just be like let things roll off uh, your back, uh, as they say, um, you'll find that you don't have that emotional charge as much and you can actually see the opportunity in some moments. There's, we all have hard times uh, and those hard times are set to try us and we're just not asking the right questions or taking the right actions or l- learning the right lesson yet. Mm-hmm. So I think it's one of the uh, better books that I would recommend. Um, and uh, the other thing, so that's The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Halliday. Um, another great book is Sell or, Boy, Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone um, or there's even another one that's called The One Thing um, and one of the things I think is that people believe they've got to do so many things to make money or become wealthy when the reality is, is all you've got to do is focus and really focus in on one thing and not get distracted 
And if you can do that, and that's one of the things we've done on Kappa, like I've closed down all my other businesses, I've closed any other distraction. If it's not to do with Kappa and not to help me onboard my goals or onboard awesome finders or grow Kappa as a company, it's just not on the table right now. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone, when you have a busy life, listening to audiobooks is a great way to expand your knowledge in the time when you may be doing other things such as driving or when you're at the gym. We have a special offer for you of a free audiobook of your choosing. To choose your free audiobook, go to www.freeaudiobookoffer.com. As long as you haven't already signed up, you will qualify. Benjamin, can we now just speculate about what could happen in the future here a little bit? And... Can you tell us what one thing would you do with your business if you knew that you could not fail? If I could not fail, yeah. I would do a hundred times more per day, enroll more people, talk to more people, and I would just talk to more people uh, and put more deals on the table. Because mm-hmm. yeah, it's about filling the pipeline, but it's about closing deals today too um, and helping people take action. So I would just be doing more, mm-hmm. more than I'm doing right now. Yeah. And what skill, if you were excellent at it, would help you the most to double your business? Being able to train people faster to take action. Mm -hmm. And in five years from now, if a well-known business publication was publishing an article on your business after talking to your customers and suppliers, what would you like it to say? Kappa was the platform that allowed me create freedom. It was the first time ever that I was able to instill success, achieve my financial goals and not have to worry about the technology system. Like it allowed me to actually grow from where I was to where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And Ben was able to make that possible. So they would be talking about me via the platform and what I made possible for their life and the difference I wanted to make in their life. Mm Mm-hmm. We're now at the part of the show where you share three golden nuggets with us. So what is your favorite quote and how have you applied it? So my uh, favorite quote at the moment is actually on my desktop uh, wallpaper. It actually says, hustle until the haters ask if you're hiring. Um, So I don't actually know who said that quote. But uh, when I saw that, I resonated with that because you're always going to have haters and you're going to have people who put you down. And the reality is, is I, there were some people that told me even when I started this, uh, people said, well, that's a crazy idea. That's a stupid idea. And then I realized that the more I delved into it, the idea was actually really good because it's just common sense. It's just logical. So based on that, um, I knew there was a bigger opportunity because the craziest ideas are what people laugh at. Um, and people are going to hate you. Just live with it. The reality is, is at some point in time, they're going to turn around and go, hey, how can I be involved with you? So uh, that's when you know you got far enough because as they say, uh, the best revenge is success. Mm-hmm. I, I think I heard that someone say that if your dream isn't big, it, your dream's only big enough if people laugh at it and you tell them about it. So you obviously, that must be something like that. Do you have any favorite online resources that you could share with us that would be useful? Uh, favorite online resources? Yeah. I would say Audible if people haven't used Audible. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is, is if you're an entrepreneur, there's resources like Growth Hacker. So that's Growth Hacker or Reddit is another wonderful resource for uh, good content. Um, and I would uh, highly recommend people using uh, Spotify or some Pandora or YouTube and instilling and in listening to some motivational Uh, material because the reality is some days are hard you need to have a positive influence coming into your life and positive messages sometimes you're walking in my uh, my office and i'll be listening to stuff in my headphones and it's just motivational videos that i've listened to maybe a hundred times already but you know what it's just that message it keeps pushing you through it It allows you to keep focusing on where you want to go and not necessarily the challenge you're dealing with today so I would say to people, find some resources that help you change your state. Because if you can change your state, you can change your mind. Mm. And what is your best advice to other entrepreneurs? Uh, it's called GSD. Okay. Uh, and GSD stands for get shit done. 
So it's not what you talk about. It's what you're going to get done today. So there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that you'll uh, see that they're always talking about the book they're writing. They've been writing that book for seven years. You know what? That's all they care about. That's the buzz and the rush for them because you know what? They don't want to actually publish the book because they don't know what to do next. So just go and get stuff done okay. and you'll be amazed that because you, I, I have so many people wanting to work with me and me to help them because we help them get stuff done. Like we get stuff done for them in, in a few days that they haven't done in years. Like I had an email just before this interview. The lady said, I've helped her more in three weeks than her, the last consultants and advisors they've used have done in two years. And she paid them about 10 times more of the money she paid me. Mm-hmm. So that's how powerful the right resources and just breaking things down into small tasks that you can get done because these small tasks add up. Mm. Everyone, if you didn't manage to get a note of Benjamin's favorite resource or his favorite book, you can find the links on Benjamin's show notes page. Just go to theentrepreneurway.com and search for Benjamin or Benjamin Bressington in the search box. Benjamin, is there anything else that you'd like to add about your business? The uh, only other thing I'd like to add about Cupper is if you're still not sure about what Cupper is, Cupper um, uh, is, allows you to sell any product in the time it takes you to make a cup of tea. That's why we call it Cupper. Mm-hmm. We wanted to make selling products as easy as a cup of tea. So we help you sell digital, physical, membership sites or pre-orders and you don't even have to worry about the credit cards, the technical stuff because we've got a team of people to help you do that or We've made it so simple that you don't even have to worry about it. You just log in. You're like, well, this is actually easier than I thought to create and have a product selling. Um, And we tell people we can have a product selling online in less than three minutes. So uh, we say to you, uh, challenge us. Uh, And I'd love to see how you use Cuppa or you'd like to use Cuppa because I uh, would love to see how you share your awesome with the world. And I honestly, honestly believe you've got some awesome that's worth sharing. And uh, I'd love to help you. And Kappa would love to help you share that awesome with the world. Wow. Well, Benjamin, it's been an absolute honor having you on the show. And it's been great hearing about how you want to share and help other people around the world do achieve greatness for themselves. So thank you very much for coming on the show. My pleasure. My pleasure. And I can't wait to help support you guys in the future and and see uh, where the show goes. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Entrepreneur Way. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball.